Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining channel. In today's quick video, I'm going to share my first experience with a FPGA with you guys. If you like the mining content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. That'll help me out a great deal. But enough of selling my channel, let's jump into the content. Now, I finally received delivery of my Xilinx FPGA. Now, this is my very first FPGA, but I did see it in a video probably more than a year ago actually on Red Fox or on Mike's channel. And, um, you know, he had it on ETH at the time. And, you know, to be honest, I didn't really take notice of it. The hash rates were great. The efficiency was fantastic. But, you know, at the back of my mind, I knew that, um, you know, Ethereum was going to go away at some point. And I didn't feel necessary, at least for me, to invest. However, the latest video that he did, I saw that at last there's a Bitstream available for Casper. And then I thought, okay, maybe I should just buy one so that I can play around on Casper and potentially any future mineable coins that they are bit streams for now fpjs is probably not for everyone and you know to be honest if i didn't have a youtube channel i probably wouldn't buy a fpga um, number one getting hold of bit streams is very hard and the fpgas are super expensive and you're sort of reliant on developers to release bit streams now we've been lucky with team red miner releasing bit streams however the mining fee is quite high on team red miner for the fpga so it's sort of they doing the development and as such charging a high dev fee so i'm super fortunate that uh, you know they are releasing that and to be honest as i mentioned if i didn't have a youtube channel i probably wouldn't buy this but i wanted to unbox it play around with it and have it and potentially see if i can spot some other bit streams available in the market and potentially do content on it now let's have a look at what i actually got in the box now first up here's the xilinx fpga box so let me just open it up so i did Tear it slightly there, but anyway, let's open it up. Oh. As you can see, it's a little device like this. It hasn't been open at all. Let's see if I can tear it open. This is what it looks like. So as you guys can see, it's actually very thin. It's got some different connectors. Yeah, I'm assuming these ones are for networking. And then here is the USB port that I suspect, or at least looking at other people's videos, that's what you need to connect to the motherboard. But as you can see, it's got the PCIe connectors there. Other than that, it's got passive cooling and a little connector here. So it almost looks like an NV connector. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that is used for, but I'm sure we will find out. Now, the other thing that I actually got on top of it, so if you watched uh, Red Fox's video or Mike's video, you would have noticed he's got a, a fan that he hooked up and blowing right through the cart for cooling. Um, I did try and reach out to the guy in Team Red Mining, um, you know, the postage fee, so he still sells those kits, by the way. So if you are interested and you are looking to pick up exactly what Mike has got, you can get it from the Team Red um, Mining Discord. However, what I went and did is I bought something different and that's what the second box is for. Now, if I open up this, let me show you guys what I got. So I actually haven't opened it up exactly, but I've got a good idea what it is. So let me just open it up. Now, what I did or what I got is something that is potentially a little bit more traditional what you and me would know. So if I open it up, it looks like there's email, even thermal paste right there. I need to be a little bit more careful with this. Um, this little bracket like that, I'm assuming that is to connect the shield. So typically what you would see there, that would be the same. I would imagine that would need to go there. Um, it's got a back plate. So as you guys can see here. And then what I have is a cooler. So you would see it looks very similar. Let me just take off, take off that. 
it's got some thermal paste already applied but this is a traditional heat sink that you would find on a graphics card um, and that's what i ended up going with and as you can see here it's got the connector on the other side here it's got a couple of fan connectors and the idea is that um, similar to what red fox has got i'm going to connect it like a graphics card to something similar to this to make sure that i've got ample cooling to keep this xilinx uh, fpga nice and cool so as you guys can see here's the the name um, so it is a c1100 um, xilinx fpga so that's really what I've got in the package. Now, because this is my first time, I need to figure out exactly how do I take this thing apart. I'm assuming I just need to replace this back plate with the back plate here, and then attach the heat sink, and then make sure that I've got, um, you know, fan headers for these two, two fans here. So hopefully on the motherboard. And what I'm actually going to do is, I'm gonna stick it right on my open air rig here, on my test rig to see if I can get it going. But first I need to figure out how to get this heatsink on the FPGA. Okay, so I managed to assemble it, and this is what it looks like after you've assembled it. And as you can see here, it looks very much like a, a cheap graphics card. And in this case, it's an expensive graphics card, but as you can see, it, it actually fits nicely. It looks exactly like a graphics card. Um, all of the, the screws are at the back. And what I notice is the existing backplate sort of looked almost exactly the same. So this is the existing backplate. Um, so I potentially could have kept this existing backplate, I think, um, but you know, just to, to make it a complete package, I managed to assemble that. The other thing, as I mentioned here at the back, there's the two fan headers that you would need to go and find a home for to make sure that these fans spin up. So that's something that I need to figure out. And in terms of the existing heatsink, this is sort of what it looks like. And as you can see, it actually looks quite nice. There's a channel array here in the middle and that's potentially why the blower, blower fan stuff works actually quite well because it will push air um, potentially from which side? I think it's from, yeah, it's from the side. It will push air all the way through um, the back area so that's potentially why the blower fan would actually work well because it's sort of designed to take um, you know air through there so again taking this off this looks more traditional so now what I need to go and figure out is how to get that working on my test bench I'm not sure if I can just stick it in and highway and it starts working or uh, you know if I need to do a custom Ubuntu image or something like that so that's what I need to go and figure out next. All right, it is now the next day and finally I managed to get it working. I must admit it felt like the good old days and when I mean the good old days, I'm absolutely lying. Um, but, you know, it was a bit of a mission to get this FPGA up and working, but I finally managed to get it working. But let me go and show you the mess that I've created. All right, so this is the mess that I've created. As you can see, I've switched off my two Octominers here at the bottom and I've got my test rig right on top of it just to get close to the network connection there. But as you can see here, it's actually currently busy mining and I'm just gonna give it a second. So there's where you can see the 4.5 giga hash on Casper and you would see on the pool it only reports 4.1 and that's really um, the 10% dev fee that comes in for using Team Red Miner. Now, if you have a look and see at the mess that I've created here, you would see there is a PCIe connector. Here's all the various different cables and risers and stuff that I've tested. I've even hooked up my Elmore Labs PMD and let me just toggle it here so you guys can see. As you can see there, it's reporting about 90 watts, but if you have a look at the power connectors here, the what I've connected, I've only really connected the one that goes into the actual device here and I haven't connected, there's a six pin and if I, maybe if I move a little bit higher you can see there's a six pin going straight into, um, you know, for the fans and that is not connected to the Elmore PMD. Now if you have a look at the actual device and the reporting, yeah I think it reports about 120 to 130 watts, so that's sort of what it reports. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about everything and all of the lessons that I've learned throughout this process. Now, talking about the lessons learned and stuff that didn't work for me and hopefully you can learn out of my mistakes, I thought sticking it straight in on my riser and 
launching HiveOS that would just work and surprise surprise it didn't work and here I am early morning uh, making a video and talking about it but it's not the same or at least it wasn't the same as any GPU that I've plugged in before uh, it just didn't detect in HiveOS and that sent me down a rabbit hole of operating systems so I tried um, getting it to work on Ubuntu desktop I tried 22 then I downgraded to uh, 20 and I still had issues I tried different USB cables um, because that's typically what you would get I got the error that said uh, JTAG device not detected or JTAG not open so it talks about the port of JTAG not being open now what the JTAG really is is this USB connector there so that is a USB type A connector going into your motherboard um, and that's really the the device or the piece of kit that talks to team red miner so this needs to be plugged in and it just kept on saying that it, it just start and stopped uh, ultimately i swapped out all sorts of stuff and then early this morning i thought okay let's just stick it on the motherboard and try something different so i ditched the typical uh, riser here that you would find on a mining rig and i replaced it with this riser here so it's also a riser but this riser is slightly different it came out of my gaming pc and if you haven't watched that video i'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested but i recently upgraded my gaming pc took out the gen 3 riser this is a time 16 riser and replaced it with a gen 4 time 16 riser um, and that's just to get the maximum performance out of my gaming gpu so i thought of keeping this for proof of useful work and then through his nuts what happened today i just stuck this into uh, the rig connected it, um, you know, to the FPJ, all my problems were solved. Now, the next thing that I ran into was updating the firmware. So it's just important the first time that you run it, um, at least running it with some of the core clock and memory clock uh, frequencies, it, it wouldn't take it. So you just need to go and update that. But once that was updated, I was ready to rock and roll. And from that point onwards, I got the hash rate that I was supposed to get. Now, in terms of the cooler, this off-market cooler that I got from Osprey, it works very well. Um, I had a look at the temperatures and I had it mining for probably an half an hour to an hour. Temperatures were well under control. I think I had 40, 40 degrees Celsius on this device. So um, this fan and cooler seems to work perfectly fine. So you don't necessarily need that little contraption uh, blower style fan that I saw on Red Fox's video. So this cooler works perfectly fine. What I would say though, for this cooler and me troubleshooting different power connectors and stuff like that, you would see here, if you have a look and hopefully the video shows it nicely, that connector there, that's the power connector that connects your eight pin uh, power connector to the actual FPGA. Now the spacing is in such a sort that the actual clip connector to loosen or you know unplug the power connector sits right at the back there so it's not in the front where you can easily connect it so that's probably the only only drawback removing the power cable is a real pain in the ass and you'll end up bending some of these pins but other than that it cools it perfectly fine that's it for this video guys if you've liked the video please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel if you didn't please specify what you would like me to change otherwise i'll catch you in the next one cheers yeah.